y'all so today I'm going to show you how to make that yellow cardigan that you saw in the intro I'm using this yarn this red heart super savers yarn it's a really inexpensive yarn I think I got all of the yarn that I needed for less than ten dollars so you'll need a crochet hook 6.5 millimeters what I used here you'll use some stitch markers if you have some and then you'll also have um, a yarn needle go ahead and make yourself a slip knot and place that on your crochet hook and then we'll go ahead and get started And I'm going to try to do this um, tutorial in phases. So it's going to take about five different parts to make the cardigan. And I'll make sure that I mark in the video so that you'll know how, you know, what part I'm working on. But we're going to start by making the back panel. And this jacket that I made in this video is um, an extra large, large. So if you need it to be smaller, you're just going to want to measure your um, shoulder to shoulder and then make your foundation chain the length of that and then that will allow you to get the width that you need and then however long you want it you'll just measure down and make sure you make your panel to the size but I'll try to put information on my blog on how to kind of customize this a little but the one that I'm particularly making in this video is going to be a um, large extra large this was for me so it looks shorter here but I made a foundation chain of 66 stitches and then I did a double crochet stitch all the way down the length of that now, if you don't know how to do a foundation a foundation chain or a crochet, any of the stitches that you do not know how to do, please link back to my channel. I do have introductory videos and everything that I'm showing you here, but I hope I go slow enough, but also fast enough that allows you to kind of see what to do. So once you get to the end of the row, you're going to make a chain of three and turn your work, and then you're going to crochet into the back loop of the um, stitch. So what we're doing here is we're kind of creating a rib looking stitch so you're going to crochet into the back loop so initially we just did a regular double crochet stitch the next row we're going to be doing into the back loop and you'll do this for the entire project in terms of the um, paneling so the front panel which is you know the, the part that you close and then the back panel we're going to do um, double crochet stitches into the back loop okay so I'm going a little bit quicker. This project, I would say it's for the kind of the advanced beginner, maybe intermediate, just because we do a few different types of stitches. Once you get your back panel created, and I did not stay on camera for this whole thing because it just takes a really long time, but it's going to look something like this. It's going to be wide enough to go across your shoulder area. And now what we're going to do is create your front panels. So what I did was I measured the length of my back paneling and then I put a stitch marker right in the middle. And then from that, I counted over four stitches from the stitch marker and that's how I'm going to figure out where my paneling needs to be. This um, area where the stitch markers are, that's kind of where the neck, the neck portion of your cardigan is going to be. So that's why I left that open and this is really just um, kind of a guesstimate um, for me this is what works so I measured across I found the middle I marked the middle with the stitch marker then I counted over four on both the left and the right from the middle and that's how I determined where I was going to do my front paneling so that's how I did it okay once you determine where you're going to want your front paneling to start you will, um, and here I'm just checking to make sure that I have an equal amount of inches on both sides because you're going to want it to be equal. Go ahead and tie your yarn to the end and I'm just simply tying a knot here and I will work that string in as I'm working along in the project but you don't have to do that if you want to wait to the end and weave it in you could do that too. Once you've tied your yarn on, go ahead and chain three, and that's going to be a stitch. That's going to be one of your first stitches, like a double crochet stitch. Then you're just going to go along the paneling, the top portion of the paneling, and you're going to create double crochet stitches all the way till you reach your very first stitch marker. Okay. And this part can be the trickiest part just because it might not be as easy to see your stitches. So what I did was as I went down, I counted the number of stitches that I created. I wrote that down. And then when I do my other side, my left side or my right side, whichever, I'm not sure which I'm working on here. Um, I'll just make sure that I have the same number of stitches, you know, so that it's equal because you're making a jacket and you want it to be able to close um, 
So that's what you're doing. So I'm just showing you here, I am doing double crochet, crochet stitches all the way up to the first stitch marker. And, um, and then we'll just kind of continue doing the double crochet into the back loop of each stitch. I hope that makes sense, guys. So I'm just trying to show you here how to kind of look for your stitch. Okay. And this is a medium weight yarn, so, um, you know, it, it, it's okay. I'm not really a big fan of the Red Super Saver, Red Heart Super Saver yarn, um, because typically it's been scratchy, but this one was really soft, and I really liked the color. I really wanted a, um, a golden sweater for the fall, winter, so this is why I picked that color. Okay, so once you get to the end, you're going to chain three, and then here we are, we're going to work into the back loop. And as I told you earlier, our chain three, for the purposes of this project, is going to count as your first double crochet stitch. Okay, so just go ahead and do a double crochet stitch in the back loop all the way down to the other end. And then you're just going to continue doing that until you reach the entire length. So the same length of your back paneling, your side paneling needs to do that too. So that's kind of more of a common sense thing when it comes to your um, cardigan. If for instance you wanted your cardigan to have like a tail and be longer in the back, then you would just kind of shorten up your um, front paneling. But mine is going to be equal, even I guess. So once you get to the end here, you're going to make sure you put a stitch into that chain three because we counted that as a stitch and we want everything to look even. So work it in. It's going to be a little tricky because a chain three is a little tighter than an actual stitch. So just work it in and um, once you do that double crochet stitch, then you're going to chain three and turn your work and continue to work down until you get to, like I said, your desired length. Okay, so like I said earlier, you'll have, we're working five different components. You'll have your back paneling, which we've already done. You're going to have your two side panelings, and then you'll have your sleeves. And then um, I added a few more things to mine because, you know, I wanted pockets, and I wanted to have a little lapel. And I'll show you how I do all that, but if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do like the pockets and all that other stuff, or even the lapel. All right, and I'm just showing you here, I'm going into the back stitch. Now I'm gonna speed through this. I'm not staying on camera. I'm giving you the gist on how to do it. And I think you can catch on. Um, if you have any questions, so please make sure you leave them in my comment section down below or reach out to me on Instagram. I do a lot of um, communicating there. So this is what it's gonna look like when you have your first paneling complete, as you can see. And I'm gonna sh show you how to do the other side, but not you know all of it on camera. So here you are, you have your other side, and we're going to do it just like we did the previous side. We're going to start at the end, and I started over to my right, and then I'm going to work into the center. So here I'm just finishing finishing it off. If you're not, um, if you didn't know what I was doing, I was just finishing it off. So go ahead and tie yourself a, um, tie the yarn to the loop, and I'm just showing you how I do that. I just pull the string through, and then I tie a knot. That's it. You guys, I I took a long time to do this project because I was working on other things. So you'll see my nail color change a bunch. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and make yourself a chain of three. That's your first double crochet stitch. And then you just go all the way back down like you did the first time. You'll do it again. So you're basically repeating what you did. You're doing it again for your other panel. And like I said before, if you kind of wrote down what your stitch count was, then just make sure you try to get the same number of stitches, you know, give or take one. It won't make a big difference if you're off a stitch. Like if you got, if you got 39 stitches on the um, right side and you got 40 on the left, it's not going to make a huge difference. Just keep going. Okay. All right. And so once you get down to the end, you're going to, um, chain three and then turn your work and continue to work into the back loop of each stitch I hope that makes sense so that that right there counts as your first double crochet stitch 
turn it if you kind of turn it to the side you can see the loop it's a lot easier and I have a lot of like I said tutorials on how to do this um, if you can't catch on here okay so this is like for my beginners that have made themselves maybe they made a few scarves or they made a blanket and they want to try to make something that they can wear this would be that it's not that difficult um, I don't think for my very beginners the sleeves now the sleeves can be tricky see because you have to work in the round but um, it's not it's not not doable if that makes sense <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna stay on camera just for a little bit longer so you can see me working this I go really fast just so okay you get to the end there and you're going to do another double crochet stitch and make sure you get into that chain three just like I said before um, and then just chain three turn your work and continue to work that's what you're gonna do and I'll try to put a pattern on my website with this one it's this one's really hard it's hard guys to write a pattern for a project that you wear because everyone's body type is a little bit different so like if you have a larger chest area or, or if you have you know if you're taller or shorter it's all gonna vary so if I put a pattern out there and I'm 5'5 five five, it might not work for someone that's six foot you know what I mean so I'll try to put something out there to kind of get you started but it's not like it's a free pattern so it's not like it may not it may or you may have to adjust it some okay so here I am I've got my my two panel lengths done and now I'm just gonna sew it down so I created a sleeve area which is about seven inches from the top of the paneling down and then I'm just gonna sew it together so I leave an arm area open and then I'm gonna just sew I'm gonna sew both side panelings down to the actual cardigan so at this stage once you get it sewed down you essentially have a vest kind of like a, a sleeveless vest and if you just wanted to have a sleeveless vest you could stop technically it would be like a cap sleeve cap, cap sleeve vest so you see here it's all sewn together this is the inside out so this is the wrong side that you're looking at will be flipped over when we're finished working with it now we're gonna go ahead and create the sleeve so um, let's go ahead and get started on making the sleeve okay so to make the sleeve I'm going to go ahead and put the crochet hook through both sides of the sleeve and that way I can pull my string back through and tie a knot um, this just kind of keeps it pulled together you don't have to do this it's just what I do okay so go ahead and tie your knot tie your yarn together and then once you have it tied on you're just going to go ahead and insert your crochet hook and then start with the uh, chain stitch I'm just showing you here. I'm just going right back through that hole right there. Okay. Now you're just going to do a single crochet stitch all the way around your um, sleeve area. And this just allows for you to have a consistent number of stitches all the way around. Because we gathered the, um, the paneling together, it's not... Um, you don't have to technically do this step, but I like it because it gives me a consistent number of stitches for both of my sleeves. So what I would suggest is you just kind of go around once you, and count as you go around. And then once you, um, once you figure out how many stitches you've created, you're just going to write that number down. So that way when you do your other sleeve, you'll be able to um, have, you know, kind of close stitches, number of stitches. And this, I'm going to be honest with you, this is a crude sleep. It's not like a science that I did here. It's really just, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it's not a science that I did. I know that there are a lot of tutorials that might make it a little bit more complicated, but it also might make it look very, very neat. For what I did, the way my cardigan turned out, I was happy with it, so... I didn't want to make this incredibly too difficult, especially if you're a new crocheter and you're really just interested in trying to make yourself something or make someone something. I, don't want, I didn't want to make it overly complicated. So once you've gone all the way around, you're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch. Okay. That's going to combine your round. 
and see, see what it looks like there. So I know how many stitches I have. I've written that down. And then you're going to chain three. And then you're going to do, I think I did double crochet stitches. Let me make sure. Yeah, I did double crochet stitches. So I want to say I did 46, 46 single crochet stitches. So you're going to have 46 double crochet stitches all the way around. And for the sleeve, I did not um, crochet into the back loop. I just did a straight, straight through um, double crochet stitch. So my sleeves are not um, ripped. Okay. So I'm just gonna stay on camera just for a second, just to show you how I go around. And I did um, how many rows? I have to put this on the blog, but so for my sleeve, I ended up doing 27 rows or 27 rounds, and I started at 46 stitches and I decreased all the way down to 31 stitches. So I'll show you how to do a decrease, but I started at 46 and I went down to 31. So once you get back around, you're going to do a slip stitch to join your round. Slip stitch is just placing the crochet hook through the stitch, um, yarning over, and then just pulling through both. And that's a slip stitch. Okay. I didn't use a, a stitch a stitch marker when I did my sleeves because when I do a chain of three, it brings the height of the row up enough that I can see where I need to end, if that makes sense. So if I wasn't doing a double crochet stitch, say I was doing a single crochet stitch, I would use a stitch marker so that I would make sure that I was coming back to the same exact spot. So you see here? So just go on in and... So every couple of rows, every couple of rounds, I start to decrease so that the sleeve begins to start to taper down until you get to like your wrist area. So here I am, I'm getting close to the end. And you can see the height of that stitch. So that's how I know I'm getting, when I get back around, that's what I'm looking for. So I'll go all the way around until I get back to that chain three. Okay, so to de decrease the sleeve, um, there is probably a better way of doing this. But what I did is every so often, once I was working around, I would just skip a stitch okay and it did not make a difference in the way the project looked now as you get more and more advanced with your crocheting and you want to look for different techniques to make things look even more seamless I would suggest you do that there are a lot of really gifted crocheters on YouTube that can probably show you how to do it in a little bit more seamless way but all I did was I would just skip a stitch so I would go around instead of going into the next one I would just skip it and go to the next one and that allowed for me to have slow decreases without it looking really gapy or gappy or whatever okay so I would go around a couple of times and then I would skip so right there is where I skip that stitch and you really can't tell especially if you're working with a bulky yarn you really can't tell this is the worst to weight yarn um, so you could probably tell if you really get to studying it but as you can see here it's starting to decrease do you see that so it's kind of crude but it, it really does it does work and when you're wearing your project no one will be able to see that so you see how it kind of decreases down and then as far as the um, sleeve I'll show you how to do that too in a little bit further up in the tutorial the um, the cap the um, wrist portion of the sleeve so just keep going around and um, just kind of take some notes so that you kind of make sure you're doing the same decrease around at the same time so I'll like I said I'll put in the in the pattern I write very layman term patterns you guys it's not I'm not complicated yet <laughs> um, I'll put in the pattern where I will say row you know um, row 12 you know skip row 13 skip you know something like that okay 
So I just want to show you. I'm trying to get back around so I can show you how to join it. Okay. So once you're done, you're just going to slip stitch like I showed you earlier. And that's that. Chain three and um, start. So just keep going until you get to the number, to the length that you need for your sleeve. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to make the wrist area of a sleeve. Okay, so the sleeve, what I ended up doing was I created front post stitches. So by doing a front post stitch, you're going to, it's on one side, it's gonna look one way. If you turn it over, it's gonna look another way. So in my, for my case, I thought it made it look like a really cool cuff, and that's why I did this. You don't have to do this. So basically, a front post crochet stitch is basically you're going to um, yarn over, and then you're going to go behind the post, and then you'll do a double crochet. And I'll put a link in the video on how to do a front post double crochet stitch if you don't catch on here. So you're just going to yarn over and then go behind that post, yarn over, pull through, and then do a double crochet stitch. So you're going to do that all the way around. And each row of the cuff, I skipped a stitch. So that way it continue to decrease. Okay. And I think I'm going to show you here what I mean. You see here? So that's the front post. It looks like that. I did a single crochet stitch around at the very end. But if you flip it over, do you see how it looks kind of um, like rows as opposed to columns? Does that make sense? So it just depends on how you're going to wear your your cardigan. If you're going to, if you want the sleeve rolled up, then it's going to look differently as opposed to if you just want your sleeve to be long. So here I'm just going to show you how I skip a stitch. I think. And remember, I'm skipping a stitch so that I can decrease the. Um, I can decrease the. Um, the rounds. Okay, I didn't show you here. What I was showing you there was just how to end the row. So chain three, and then we're going to start again. Okay, so just, yeah, we're just doing front post crochet stitches. Oops, sorry guys. There you go. So I skipped it. Do you see? I, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to the next one. That's going to allow me to decrease a little bit. It's going to allow me to decrease the wrist area because if you look at your arm, of course, it goes from larger to smaller around your wrist. Okay. And I'm showing you there again. That's what it looks like. So you see how it's slowly starting to decrease. And once you get to the desired length, then I just did a single crochet crochet stitch all the way around and that created that that um the finishing row. Okay. And that last row of single crochet stitches, you don't have to do that. That's just an embellishment that I threw on there to finish it off so that it looked more complete. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. That's what I love about crocheting. You can kind of customize it to make it look however you want it to look. Rep post. Alrighty. So that is what it's looking like. And that's before I finish it off. So now I'm going to just do one round of. I think I did single crochet stitches into the back loop. Let me see. No, I didn't actually. I did a I did a slip stitch into the back loop. Okay. Yeah. So just insert the crochet hook, pull through, yarn over and pull through. And that is a slip stitch, not a single crochet stitch. 
Okay. Um, if you do a single, if you do a slip stitch like what I'm doing, it's going to make it even tighter around your wrist. So if you find that your project is still large when you try it on, and you want it to make it just a little bit tighter without redoing anything, just do a slip stitch. A slip stitch always makes it a little bit tighter. So, but you can get the same kind of look. Do you see? It's got the rib there. Right, and so that just kind of really cinched it all together. And if you want it to roll up your sleeve, it's going to look a little bit different than if you were to just wear it long. So, in whichever way you choose. All right, now let's create the lapel. If you want it to be done, you could be done. I am making a lapel, and the way I'm doing that is I am going to do I tied on the yarn and I'm going to do a double crochet stitch all the way up till you get to the neckline. And because I already did the other side, I already had a count, so I already kind of knew how many double crochet stitches I needed to make. But basically, just like with the sleeve, if it was a big hole, I put two double crochet stitches into the hole. If it was a smaller hole, I put one. And the goal here was just to make it look consistent and make it look to make it look neat. So, um that's what I did see how there's some gaping holes and usually at the end of the row you have a bigger hole um, I just added two double crochet stitches I hope that's not confusing guys okay and I sped it up just because um, this is just the finishing part of the project you don't have to do it so I'm really just giving you an ideal on what you can do so do you see here what it looks like what I did was I did a, a row of double crochet stitches. I'm going to, um, when I get closer to the neck area, I ended up um, doing a half double crochet stitch into the into that larger space so that it doesn't um, sit right on top of my neck. Chain three, turn your work and work back down into the back loop. Oh no, I did, okay, I did a front post Oh, all right, girl, I'm doing things. Okay, I did a front post down the row. I did a front post stitch. So I didn't just do a standard stitch. Oh, I was getting fancy, guys. Y'all don't have to do this. <laughs> um, if you wanted to make it look the way mine look, I did a front post stitch. So I did a double crochet stitch going up and then I did a front post stitch going down and see how it makes the little ridges there. So just continue doing that. I did it three times so that I had three rows of that. So it looks that looks good. Go okay. <laughs> All right. Now if you want a pocket, you're just gonna make a pocket. I just make a swatch. I did mine 10 inches long, 10 inches wide. You make two of them. Um, I didn't really go into details with that. You're gonna make that and then you're gonna arrange it where you want it on the actual cardigan. You can either make it straight up and down or you can make it diagonal and then you're just gonna sew. Sew on three sides of it so that it, it creates a pocket. So if you want the pocket to be a little bit deeper, just make your square a little bit longer. That's it. Great project to make. It took me a while, but I got it done. And here's what it looks like with it on me, y'all. I was struggling. There was some kind of mosquito. <laughs> anyway, that's what it looks like on me. That looks like that's the back. I love this color. It's perfect for the fall. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the description box down below. And again, thank you so much for your support. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.